Hey everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa. Thank you for coming to the live show. And if you're here for the replay, it's good to see you. Thank you for coming to the replay. Today I'm going to show you how to paint this really wonderful campfire scene in the National Park Arcadia underneath a Milky Way star. I'm going to show you all the different, different techniques of how I got this. We're going to be covering space techniques. We're going to be covering how to lay in fires and create glow and how to imply shape in dark space and it's going to be really easy and fun and perfect for you because i'm going to explain every single step on the mic today is my husband john hello john follows me with one of our four cameras so you can be really up to date on the action if you're here for the live and you need to see an angle or you have a question he's the one watching the chat trying to figure that out but also remember we have a bunch of light keepers here and those are people that are going to help you out if somehow we miss your question. We generally start out by introducing the materials, do wishes, and then we begin the painting. That's sort of our... Our jam. Our jam. That's our jam. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to put up, I'm going to put this on the easel and hopefully this time it will not go topply topple. Let's see if we will be needing stunt hands today. <gasps> we don't! And I'm going to put up a 16 by 20 canvas. I've lightly sketched this in, though I did talk to Chuck. I'm going to show you guys how to draw it in. I did talk to Chuck about doing um, a traceable. And also just realize on these silhouettes, if, you know, the guy and the dog doesn't speak to you, there's a lot of silhouettes on Google. You could just Google silhouette sitting, right? And you could have dogs, a little row of dogs. You could have a little row of cats. You could have a couple of ladies. You could have some kids. There's all kinds, of, you could have a cowboy. It's just really whatever you want to do. What's most important is knowing the techniques. Today I'm going to show you the guy and the dog. Yeah, I look, I look forward to this one. I'm, I'm pumped about this. More information is in the description. If you click that more button, more information will pop up. It will have materials. Um, I'd like to add that definitely you can add Southern Ocean Blue today if you have it instead of mixing the turquoise. And I would recommend having both phthalo and ultramarine blue to give some variants of the blue tones. Just a little trick if you can do it. But if you just have phthalo, you're okay. Yeah. We'll talk about that as we go. How are we doing today, John? Uh, we're doing pretty good. This you is know, a special episode, right? It is a special episode. It's a birthday episode. It's a birthday episode. It's Mona's birthday. Happy birthday, Mona. How, yeah, she's out here with us. She's celebrating today. She had a great picture up on her Facebook page. It really? Was, yeah. Awesome. I'm sippy sipping coffee You're, today. What are you sippy sipping? This is mocha. Mocha. Starbucks K cup coffee with soy mm. creamer. Mmm. It's Sherpa power. Sherpa power. You know what I forgot to put out, Don, and you're going to crack up. What did you forget to put out? cups of water oh, of course so i would say to you as an acrylic teacher water is a very important part of acrylic painting mm -hmm. <laughs> i like to use water instead of mediums especially in my classes yes you could use mediums yes they make special mediums for flow but um water is that free stuff out of your tap and acrylic paint is at the end of the day designed to be thin with up to 30 percent water so, John's yeah. going to get me some I'm cups gonna, of water. Are you, you going to not sing uh, the happy birthday song? Oh, we're going to sing happy birthday to Mona. Is everybody sing, ready? Okay. So we have to sing a non-registered copyrighted version of happy birthday, which means I'm going to make something up. You can sing the real one at home because they can't come get you. <laughs> I'll turn down your background music so you can just sing it all alone. All right. It's your birthday on the heart party. Happy birthday, Mona, Mona. It's your birthday, not at a restaurant. It's your birthday, and this is copyright free. You're going to paint with us on your birthday. And I don't have a singing show for a reason. Boy, we're going to get thumbs on that. <laughs> I'm just saying. I took some risk there for you, Mona, because you know how the YouTube community does not appreciate bad singing. Like at all. Mona can sing too. So she's like, she's like cringing, but also touched at this moment. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure she's like, oh, oh, I'm so glad she doesn't have a singing show. But thank you for the, for the kind, bad singing. I appreciate it. Everybody thinks you're pretty awesome. They love it. You guys They are love sweet. your singing. You guys are so sweet. So I'm excited about this. Um, this is, okay. I've just... You know, sometimes you get a painting in your head, you get an idea in your head, and you just really want to do it. This is a painting I've had in my head, kind of like the ultimate country and western song. 
This is just a painting I felt like I needed to do. And I'm so glad we get to do it for Mona's birthday. I'm going to start out with Doxine Purple, Thalo Blue, Titanium White. This is the optional Southern Ocean Blue. If you don't have Southern Ocean Blue by Matisse, just get a little Cad Yellow out there. And that's going to be the beginning of our sky. I recommend getting a soft bodied paint for doing the stars. I have the golden oh, soft bodied paint yeah, right I'm gonna here. Come, I'm going to adjust that down. The lights are a little bright today. Are they just bright? It's like I'm being abducted by aliens while I'm teaching a painting with aliens. <sighs> Hi. <laughs> That's my daughter Luna. So I recommend a soft body paint, but look. The craft paints actually are soft body paints. These are self-leveling paints that don't have polymers to build up the body. And also now Artist Loft has one, and, and those run about a dollar. So you can get the golden, which is fantastic if you can do it or you have it in your area. But what you're just looking for is soft body paint. Yeah. Of any kind. Craft paint being good. Believe it or not, your house paint is soft body paint. Yes. That's just something you might not think of, but a little tub <laughs> house paint is soft body paint and does a pretty decent splatter. And if you think about it, it's designed to be outside. So it is UV reflective. Just yep. a just a thought. Now on, on the colors, real quick, I want to go back over to the colors real quick. So on, I'm going to bring some music back up too. So we're looking at the colors. So you're saying if you don't have Southern Ocean Blue. If you don't have Southern Ocean Blue, you can use the Cad Yellow to create a turquoise. Okay, so that's so that'll yeah. that's how we'll mix that up a little later. Okay, And I'm going to show both of those. I just want both people to be able to do it. Okay. You know, um, it's great if you have a Southern Ocean blue because it makes a really spectacular space effect for those, like those nebula colors. Oh, yeah. Right? But if you don't have it, you can mix it. And so I'm going to show both. Of course, I'm painting brushes with acrylic today. I've got my Simply Simmons out. Boy, they have totally converted me. And really just based on merit, guys. This is just based on merit. Here's Goldilocks. She's yep. here. Yep. Number 10 Bright Extra Firm Filament by Simply Simmons. All of them. I like them. Extra firm is key. Cups of water. I like to sketch in and do my wishes with watercolor pencil because it disappears and doesn't stain the paint. Mm -hmm. If you use a graphite pencil, it will stain your paint. But kids chalk also works. Yes. Obviously, our first wish is happy birthday, Mona. Yes, happy birthday, Mona. All right. What's our next wish? Oh, let's see. I'm going to go back up here. Well, I'm putting my we wishes had, up in the stars. We have lots where of the wishes. stars can we, hear we have them. lots of birthdays coming. I think we have lots of birthdays going on right do now. Do we? Who's, who do we you, have? You, you know, I saw uh, uh, Jennifer and uh, uh, it looks like Daenerys, but uh, I can't say that I'm saying pronouncing that name correctly. I know Ghost Huntress has got a birthday. She, tomorrow, I think. Hers is Wednesday, right? Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, there's lots of birthdays. Um, Little balloons here for the birthday. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm going to x-ray this later and go, what? Now I'm going to scroll back over here because we that also girl had, had terrible writing. She should have been a doctor. Now, we had we had some wishes for uh, for to, for to some well-being. Mm -hmm. Millie had some wishes for, for well-being and no more earaches. Oh, yes. Um, I think I wrote her daughter's name down. Uh, Millie. Millie. Oh, I hope your earache is better. A recovery from earaches. Yeah. Earaches are the worst. They are. Gets better soon. Just not fun soon. We have a lot of wishes for general good health and happiness. General, I know. General good health and happiness. Mm hmm In the world. The world gets healthier and happier <laughs> every day. <laughs> and... and Alexis is asking for some Sherpa magic. She's trying to get pregnant this month. So Ooh, whatever right. whatever baby making magic you can sprinkle around. Let's find the baby in the stars. Baby for Alexis. Yeah. Let me wish that for you. Boy, I remember being there for my kids. Totally wish it for you. And, and we're going to and. and Let's see here. We got a. Oh gosh, there's the, the, the chat's kind of going today. <laughs> so Is there's, it? Yeah, there, I think Amber also has a birthday, and there's an anniversaries going on. Oh my gosh. Do you know who? It helps if I know yeah. who. Oh yeah, no, uh, I, I can I can go back specifically. So Amber's birthday tomorrow is uh, Jennifer's anniversary. Another Jennifer. Jennifer, happy anniversary, Jennifer. All right, I think we're good. If you saw a wish. 
an anniversary, anything that you want to participate in celebrating, put it in your canvas. All wishes are valid. Wishes don't have to be serious. They can be silly. They can be serious. Whatever you need them to be, you put them in your canvas. You paint over them. And I don't know. It helps you feel better. Could you throw one more in there for Kim Sim that I just Yes. Did, to a wish for stop smoking. Oh, Kim. I'm with you. Now, she trying sure. to stop? I'm not sure if that's for her or for, for if she caught that for one of our community members, but I saw her shot right. that in there just as we were scrolling. Whoever's up. trying to stop smoking, I just wish you all the strength and luck in the world. It is so tough. It is so tough. Here's my tips. Be forgiving of yourself. Mm -hmm. It's hard. Don't let anyone give you any grief. If you can go live in a cave, <laughs> I highly recommend that. And, and you can do it because other people have done it. It just... And just all the light and love and strength and support that you need to get through that. Yeah. Yeah. That's a that's a crazy tough thing, isn't it? What's wrong with my sound? Or sound? I have this I have this color adjusted for the darker uh, palette. Mm hmm That you know, as you like Yeah. So beautiful, right? So Oh. Okay. Okay, but it's okay as long as they can see the painting good. Yeah, they'll be later. Like if I'll, you have I'll, to brighten it up for the painting, yeah, I'll but brighten that's it back. We're gonna do. A I'm later. gonna sketch this in, okay? And again, you can use a traceable, but this isn't actually that hard to sketch in, guys. I'm yeah. sketching in pretty dark, right? So what I'm gonna tell you is this lower section of canvas, which is about three inches or three fingers. My three fingers up. I'm going to make a little mark so I know that this is my ground that my silhouette is built on. And so I'm going to come over on my ground over about an inch and a half. Can and I'm going to make a little seat. Yeah. I make this little seat for him. Can we see it? Or is it not showing? Yeah, it's just, it's, you, you zoom out just a touch. Okay. I'm just worried. Well, that's the wrong direction. There you go. There and you go. There we can see it. <laughs> right? Once I know where my seat is, I like to make a little curve line coming up. That's my daughter playing, <laughs> right? And then I mark it with a little T, and that's actually how I get the gesture of his body. Yeah. Right? I bring some shoulders off of here and come down, bring a little elbow out to the side, and then I just arc his little body down to the, the stump. I don't know what he's got his little elbow out for. Maybe he's lighting a pipe. Maybe he's popping a beer. Maybe he's sticking a marshmallow on a stick. Or playing the harmonica. Or playing harmonica. I don't know what he's doing, but he's doing something. Yeah. I give him a collar, and I like to get that collar just about a salvage edge, a quarter of an inch edge. Mm -hmm. And then I just put a little circle above the collar. I bisect that in half with the line, and I come up and I make my little mountain for a hat. Yeah. That's really all I do for the silhouette. And then I like to pop this little knee out here. Yeah. Right? Little things to know. The length of my elbow is going to drop down to wherever my imaginary mid-waist is. So his arm would come out about to where, if you were just make it on a fulcrum going up. Just a little interesting thing to know about figure drawing. That's always true. Huh. Cool. Right? Yeah. And the knee, if you look, is on a fulcrum off the shoulder. I don't know if you guys have ever noticed this, but whether I'm drawing imaginatively or whether I'm drawing literally, these are weird little things that I tend to leave in my drawings. And if you look at it, even on chibis, the functional structure rules will often stay the same. So those proportions to our eyes look kind of normalish. Yes. So no matter how much I change the proportion, it feels correct. So that's just a weird little thing that you can do when you're doing silhouettes to be like, okay, hmm. right? And I know this whole shape up here is about two of these. Just a weird thing. Two of the hat heads will fill the body. Gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, it's just a weird thing. So I'm going to come off his little imaginary log and I'm going to make a dip down into the ground mm -hmm. and come up. Now the dog, he's going to be, if you look at him, he is in line. This is really interesting, but he's in line with that elbow arm. Yeah. Can't really see it on that big camera. You can't? Well, not on the wide camera. It's, it's, it's Oh. In the up close, can you see yeah, it? Yeah, in the up close, you can totally okay, see so it. Okay, so you can see that line. So I arc a little back up, up to that. I just arc this little back. 
and then I bring a little triangle up, I make a space, I bring a little triangle up, I come down to a little pointy nose, curve the body in. That's all I say about the dog. This is what? <laughs> That's all I say. Yep. I just curve it in. Is it going okay? Oh yeah, no, no. It's uh, the the challenge is that we have. Uh, Basically, the, the close-up camera looks too dark, but that's how we can see the light drawing that you're doing. And yeah. the wide camera is too bright because it's, you know, it's it's the way that we have, you know, consumer-grade cameras. So yeah. <laughs> we only can do what we can. So I make this little pointy, bushy tail. And then I'm going to come in here and say, oh, little scrubbly, scrubbly, scrubbly. Actually saying scrubbly, scrubbly helps. Scrubbly little bush. Yeah. Right? And off of the log, I've got a little scrubbly little bush here. And this is the only part I actually need to draw in. But I'm going to tell you something right here. I make a little U just to talk about that this is a fisheye lens, an imaginary fisheye lens. Can you pull the close-up camera up just so we can see that? That U? Yeah, where that U is. I don't know that the U is even yeah, showing. You can see it very lightly there. Okay, this is all I'm saying. You, you can sketch this in. You're going to be painting over it. But this is how our tree line is going to work. And that's how we're going to be able to see our Milky Way, and it's is if it's a fisheye lens. But this is an emotional imagination fisheye. Gotcha. I'm going to take this purple at least down to his hat. Yeah. Right? The purple's going to come, the skyline's going to come at least down to the top of his hat. Right? And that's how we're going to be able to have the amount of sky peeking out. And I may even I may even dip it and take it a little bit further, but at least down to his hat. Okay. So here's what we do. We're gonna grab Goldilocks, our 10 inch fill not 10 inch, <laughs> our number 10 filbert extra firm. And I am going to get a little blue and a little purple. A little blue and a little purple. If you need to get a scotch of white. And the first little layer I'm putting in, and this is this sky is going to be in layers. This is the ultimate space sky. Yeah. A little more purple. Grab, scotch a little bit of white. This is smidgen. Smidge that white. Smidge the white. Smidge it. And see, I'm bringing this down. This first layer, I'm just bringing down. Right. Go ahead and get just some dogzine. I'm not dogzine. Thalo blue uh -huh. and a little bit of white. And then I'm going to come here and I'm going to smidge this down. We are going to be working this two color system, the dogzine and the thalo, a lot to get this night sky effect. This is going to blow the mind of whoever's looking at your spacey sky. I love them. I love the spacey skies. I added just a smidge of the white there. This is just so that that nothing is uniform. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, listen. Realistically, when you're in Arcadia, I don't know it looks exactly like this. I think this is astrophotographers <laughs> are taking photos and punching the color on them a lot. Well, yeah. They use, we use uh, wide spectrum cameras to be able to catch more light than just with the visible yeah. spectrum. I'm thinking so. And see, I'm even letting this blue go even below my imaginary line. Mm -hmm. Right? Now, I'm going to get back into my purple. Back into my purple. Into my purple. And I'm going to come up the middle. I've got some purple here. I'm going to come right up the middle with some of this great purple. I do dampen my brush if I'm having a little trouble getting flow. And here's what, if you don't add the smidge of white, it can go too dark on you. Mm -hmm. Do you need to brighten this as we're painting so it sees Actually, it? it's doing okay right now. Okay. They're real close. The uh, wide okay. camera is dialed on the maximum of exposure, so it's, it's okay. So I'm going to button right up the middle with this purple. Button right up the middle with purple. Right up the middle. Because that's that center, that dark center in that Milky Way. And this is a good way to layer it down. So I've got a middle strip right here, purple. I'm going to come back over into my dog's name. Maybe I add a scotch of purple to it. Add a little white. Seam up these two spaces. Yeah. Now, I get a really good blend 
between my two paints from two things mm -hmm. that I work fast enough that they're still wet and because my bristles are stiff. <laughs> if your bristles are stiff, if your bristles are stiff, what? I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> why would you want Scottishly stiff bristles? Because you do. Okay. I'm just thinking of my friend Tanya. <laughs> Does it? Is it? <laughs> she has a really cute YouTube channel. I've collaborated with her before, and she has this like fantastic accent, and we all want her to do voiceovers on everything we have. <laughs> like voice over everything, Tanya. Voice over all the things. That's great. And you know what? No. I'm thinking I'm saying her name wrong again. Are you? I, it, yeah. Okay. That's yeah. okay. If I get kicked out of my own group, it will be understandable. <laughs> <laughs> if she's just sitting here, it's a problem that I have. It's it's a type of dyslexia. Do you know how long it took me to say Audie's name correct? Uh, I, I do. <laughs> and it's just... I, I, I still catch myself. It's like, just <laughs> worse. You don't know how much conversation has gone on about this. Though. <laughs> I think it might be Tania. Oh yeah. Or taught yeah. Yeah. You <laughs> you're gonna Shh, dude, I just literally want to walk off set and go look it up right now. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna obsessively compulse on this. I am. If you check out my Doctor Who video with the TARDIS, she's one of my collaborators and uh she did a really great uh portrait of Eccleson and Ah, she's you like can't, amazing. Can't Luckily, she's a mental health care professional, so she, she probably is like, "Oh, this girl is so disabled." She has a lot of understanding for you. I think she must. I f I feel like people must have understanding for me. I might be doing it right too. I might be just having a panic. Does anyone ever get a thing where you write a word and you're looking at it and you can't tell if it's right or wrong? Like oh. you can't see it. And I hate it when it's like a really basic word too. Yeah. Oh. It's the worst, right? Mm -hmm. Like, am I ever going to be on Jeopardy? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> That's never happening. Can I add a little white to my thalo? I teach painting okay. <laughs> That's what you for sure get. Yeah. I'm not going to paint out my sketch. No? No. I'm going to work around him. Okay. I'm going to leave him out. Because I am. I actually do him later. Uh -huh. And that's one of the tricks of this piece. Now, I'm sure some of you have people that this is going to, or maybe this is going on your wall. Of course, we could do our usual thing where we add, um, where we add uh, spaceships or enterprises or death stars to the sky if we feel like it. But mm -hmm. the idea of this is, um, and it's so funny, it's kind of a tip to Negolero, if you guys know him, this idea of the guy in the camping in the woods. And I don't know how much of that is surviving in the world today. Do you, John? You know? I this The sense of outdoors you and know, adventure. I, there's a lot of it, I think. There's, you know, you, you especially, you know, there's, I, I see a lot of people still doing that, going out adventuring. I mean, you still see a lot of, you know, even in, in pop culture advertising with the Subaru commercials, there's, you know, there's still a strong current of adventure, I think. The Subaru commercials. <laughs> well, no, I mean, because it, it speaks to... defense that there's a strong current of what? adventure. Of campers. <laughs> yeah. This couple will not be trapped in khakis. If you don't live in the U.S., just be grateful you haven't been subjected <laughs> to these ads. <laughs> well, it does. But, I mean, it sort of talks about that there's still a whole group of people who want to go out and go camping and fishing and play in the outdoors. And Yeah, I, I hope so. It feels like the world just, it, it, it's like, like known, like they're saying like the world is known. Yeah. And that's sad. The world should never just be known. It should still be a mystery. Anyways, this painting is about those things. You At know, least there's the mystery painting to still solve. I think and the, this is great. So I was, I was looking at it as I was, I was realizing, you know, this could totally be, uh, you know, a shot from the forest moon of Endor. Are we going to go back to Ewoks or evil? Oh, no, no. They're awesome. I, I, I think they're scary as all get out. Yeah. That's just my theory. Um, I am hecka afraid of Ewoks. <laughs> I think they're very scary creatures, and that is how I feel about that. <laughs> <laughs> so don't go camping on Endor. Don't go camping on Endor, dude. They were going to eat uh, <laughs> Han Solo and Luke. So <laughs> just, just to point out, this was a sentient being eating other sentient beings. That ain't cute, no matter how you dress it up. <laughs> just 
<laughs> just pointing out some 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 trek problems. <laughs> How did that get past this? One, you know? <laughs> <laughs> They're cute and cuddly. Right? I'm pulling a little phthalo blue and more white. And I am just pulling the phthalo and more white. You can see the color here. It's quite bright. Mm -hmm. And now, and hopefully my up-close camera can get right on this, I am going to start putting in the highlight space of my Milky Way. Right? Mm -hmm. And so my pressure is light. My brush is dry, but my paint underneath is wet. And this is going to take a minute. This doesn't, you know how sometimes, like, you know, you watch a Bob Ross painting and the painting is like three brush strokes and done? This mm -hmm. is not like that at all. <laughs> 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 Which is why we are not on the network TV. <laughs> you can pull up a picture. Um, there's so much reference. I probably looked at 50 reference photos, mm -hmm. like just all up surrounding me. You know how like in crime shows they have like the monitors with like all the different oh, things yeah. going on. This is like how I work. There's like all these pictures on my monitors and I'm like referencing this and that from different angles. It's actually kind of cool. What is so that? Uh... Yeah, just dry brushing this up here. I'm not going to take it completely to the top. Just about an inch wide. Meander out, meander in, meander out, commander in, meander out. And I'm going to just take this cloud back a little. It's not a real cloud, it's a space cloud. I'm gonna take this back. It's a just, space cloud. It's a space cloud. It's this is this is this is star stuff. This is stuff of stars. Oh, I love it, love it, love it. Alright. Just and that's that first layer. And guess what I get to come do over on this side? <laughs> More of that. More of this. There will never be enough of this. And today is one of the exciting days where I do damage to John's cameras and he just laments <laughs> in the background. <laughs> <sighs> so I'm just coming here. I want this to be dark in the center. This is an important part of if you're doing the Milky Way, it should be dark here in the center. <sighs> So, uh, I'm going to pull this up here a little bit, just cloud it up. How just many hoots do you think this is? Two. Two hoots? Two hoots. This is pretty achievable. This is really achievable. If you've yeah. done a couple paintings and they've you felt pretty good, like you're like, oh, I got that technique, I got the dry brush technique, I got the splatter technique, I got all this stuff. In my iCart, oh, here's an important tip. In my iCart, mm -hmm. I have linked at the time stamp where I showed all the different types and ways of splattering. Oh. So if you're like, man, I'm not ready to splatter, you can go quick watch that. I go over all the splattering in that video. Hmm. You don't have to watch that whole video. That's the one where I did the Aurora Borealis, and oh, yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. here's the different kinds of splattering. So I, I carded it into this so you guys could have that. Oh, How nice. awesome is that? That's cool. Now I'm going to bring this in a little narrower because it gets narrower as we come up towards this part of it got my light blue there's going to be layers guys and I may come back with dark purple the layers in the space painting are key mm. I kind of want to do a big glow galaxy oh yeah in my son's room <laughs> That and I'm going to take this out. This goes all the way to the top. I'm going to very lightly take this out. Again, this is dry brushed, so what's underneath is coming through. Right? I'm lightening it. I'm lightening it. Lightning. And that's what I've got going on here. You're just creating depth in our night sky. Yes, I am. Now, I can take a little of my cad yellow over to my phthalo blue and create a deep turquoise and add a little white to it. You guys see that? Mm -hmm. It's a little different than just the phthalo. And I'm going to come underneath here. And I'm going to start working that turquoise in. There? Yep, right along here. Like, I'm just going like. to keep working it in. Because guess what? We come back with a whole other color. So it's just just endless with this, right? Endlessly. Maybe I'm gonna put some up here in the upper right. I'm gonna make a little kind of cloud shape. Stiff brush is your friend. Mm -hmm. 
Stiff brush is your friend. If your brush is soft enough to put makeup on with, your brush is not stiff enough. <laughs> now, I talked about the Southern Ocean Blue. I can yeah. take a little Southern Ocean Blue out and just a little white, a little bit. And I'll show you the other side. All right, so there we go. So we got this going. So if you, I know a lot of you have the Southern Ocean Blue. I still love that color. I don't know how long we're going to be able to get it. But it's a fun color. But it's a super fun color. I hope uh, all of you in Australia, you're fine. It's made there. <laughs> <laughs> if you're in Australia right now and you're watching, you can get this color. Southern Ocean Blue, Matisse Dervan. Um, everywhere else, we may have a limited time to get it. I'm not sure what's going on. I've just heard that, but I... You know what? I don't know anything confirmed. We're going to the Art Material Show, hopefully. Oh, yeah. We're, trying, we're, we're planning on it. We're planning on it. And I'm really hoping to come back with a bunch of information about where stuff is shipped, what materials are available around the world. Because it mm -hmm. says the World Art Material Show. It says World Con. Yeah. So hopefully they're not being facetious. <laughs> No, I imagine that the it's it's the hotels are all booked up. Yeah, I'm pulling out some just blue, and I'm going to come back in and 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 work this with just the thalo, breaking up the shapes up here. See, I'm coming in and working these shapes. These skies, the success of these skies is about you being willing. Like I'm coming around this space, around this little light spot. Guess what? A lot of this disappears when I paint the trees. Yeah. But that just happens, but you want it there. Yeah, it's, you can't you can't fake it unless you put it in there first. Yeah, it's just I'm just moving this paint and blending it out. Can you see these these layers being built up? Yeah. Now rinse your brush out. Rinse, 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 rinse. rinse. <laughs> so cute. Rinse, 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 rinse. Get a little white in your dogzine and a little white in your dogzine. This is going to be lighter than what you've done before. But you still want it to be distinctly purple. Let's start Ooh. working in. So Valerie, I'm watching them read the comments. Valerie's saying that she got a smoking good deal on Dollar and Rally paints yesterday. Did she? Yeah, she got a big Excellent. score, big haul. I, I post pictures on the Facebook. Oh yeah, if you Please. guys, have, if you guys we love do, hauls, we we love to see pictures of your art hauls. So we'll. Please share those pictures. I think those are cool. So a trick here that I'm also doing is look, I'm, I'm making sure I'm, I don't just have a circle here. I have a, a wiggity, 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 wiggity. Yes. <laughs> what? <laughs> you know what who to doing? be. What are you doing? What are you doing? That's, I still like your bracelet. Everyone likes your bracelet. Today. Thank you very much. My friend Tasha gave it to me. <laughs> <laughs> I love this bracelet so much. I wear it a lot. It gives me art powers. Mm -hmm. I believe this bracelet is magic. My friend Tasha's magic, so this bracelet is probably magic. I think so. I've got some just deep purple, and I'm blending it in here. Right here. I'm creating this dark space. So this is what I'm always trying to do with the space paintings is, and I'm going to come up in the corner and deepen this up, is cr just work these tones and values out because the sky, it's, it's alive. Yeah. It's a living, living thing. John's going to laugh now. But it's a living, living thing. Hmm. I'm going to pull a little of my blue. It's got a smidge of the white in it. And I'm going to come back and work this edge along this kind of turquoise nebula. Just working it. Maybe come in here and break it down and... Like along this little edge here, deepen that up, like along my little cloud edge, in just that little spot here. You walk where I walk. This painting will happen <laughs> for you. <laughs> it's, it will. I it's just. What? I like the layers. Oh, you like the layers? I like the layers. I'm here for the layers. Look, I'm not rushing through this, guys. You can kind of consider this almost a workshop. This is almost like a free workshop. Actually, this is a free <laughs> workshop. <laughs> so Teresa was just asking a funny question, which is, uh, she asked, how many, uh, how many test pieces do you do before filming? Um, there's a lot of actual work before filming. It's when I'm not filming, what I'm doing is designing. Yeah. When I'm not filming, I'm designing, and I'm designing all the time. 
Um, I, ha I have sketches and little color studies, and then there's one to two paintings to work out all the sketches and color studies into a design hole. And um, yeah, there's a tremendous amount of artwork everywhere. It's a hoard. Come help us. <laughs> we're gonna we're buried under the art. That's not entirely true. They're all nicely stored. But what's funny? Well, see, what I find funny is that she does. She'll do preparation. She'll do days and days and days in research to do to get a painting done, and then. There's other days where she's just like, all right, we're going to do a painting today and just, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to paint. It's like, what are we painting? We're painting a dragon today. <laughs> and there's just a dragon appears. Yeah. It's a weird thing. So I got the just Southern Ocean Blue. You can make your turquoise here. All right. Also is good. Turquoise is also good. What's nice is the green blue, whether you're hand mixing your turquoise with the, the cad yellow and the. And we're just trying to create some depth to this. These these bright colors. <laughs> my daughter's playing Let It Go. And John has to stop it because we can get content ID'd. <laughs> so my daughter's doll sings this song. And if the system hears it, it will grab it and content ID it for YouTube. Not kidding. Disney ends up with it. So we're not like... Don't let your doll sing. We're just... I'm explaining the content ID danger that doll <laughs> creates. Yeah, I was like, your doll is a little loud and can trigger content ID. <laughs> That's, you know, if you ever wonder why we ever get on Periscope, that is, and if you don't know what Periscope is, it is a live broadcasting app. Yes. That you can get for free and it's part of Twitter. Um, because it doesn't have content ID yet. Mm -hmm. So we can have some music like what I would normally have in my studio playing while I'm goofing around. And that is a lot of what is going on with us in that. Now I'm going to also just show you real quick how to mix this. You would just take, again, a little, this, this smidgy amount mm -hmm. of yellow over to your blue. And create that teal color. You add some white to it to take it to the turquoise. Yeah. I just wanted some dark there. And you can see it's not that far off the Southern Ocean Blue, but that would be the two ways that you can enjoy it. I'm going to put some more up in this corner. Yeah. Those are a couple ways that you can enjoy those colors and really, really get some, you know, benefit out of them. Isn't this just gorgeous, John? I just love that stuff. I style. love it. All right. Rinsey, rinsey, rinsey. Here we go. Tap, 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 tap. <laughs> abusive. I'm brush abusive. So are, are you dry brushing? There? Yes. Okay, you're still dry brushing. I am. A lot of this is, is really about, is your brush stiff? It's going to get to be a joke in the comments, I know. <laughs> and <laughs> is your paint kind of dry and are you glazing and layering and scrumbling it in? Ah, These okay. are the things that you're trying to do to get this sky effect. M Mona kept asking, are you are you dry painting? And I... And I at first, yes. the first time she asked me, it took me a minute to, to process what she was asking. Oh, listen, and for Mona's birthday, you may not know this. Those of you here in the live chat, Mona has a YouTube channel now. Yes, she does. So you can click her name and go over and subscribe, and that can be your little birthday gift to her. Oh, yes, absolutely. Like, please, comment, please, please. and subscribe to Miss Mona. And share and share something up on your on your social feed for her. Yep. That's That'll do her a lot of good. That's happy birthday to Mona. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know you're on YouTube when you're like, for my birthday, if you could just like my video, that would be great. <laughs> but yeah, she's got a YouTube video now. So not only does she take the time to comment on all of our paintings and your paintings and just be, I mean, we all know her. She's so art supportive. It's on another level. Yeah. So I've got a lighter color. I'm working here along this edge. You know, I am... Trying to find this out here, this lighter color. Working over there to the left of the light, but I leave like that dark blue in that space right there, right? A little dark blue. Oh, yeah. I know we need a camera from the left. Yeah, we get, we'll, we'll get more cameras as we can. Yeah. So what, what 
uh, what blue are you mixing with the cad yellow to get that aqua? Phthalo blue. A phthalo it blue. It doesn't do it with ultramarine. You'll just get ever increasing shades of olive if you use ultramarine or cayenne. But phthalo blue and cad yellow gives you an incredible turquoise. Good. Okay. So I'm just working these little spots. I want this, I want my Milky Way to just pop. Pop, pop, pop. Like it does. Give me that ruby rod. Yes, ruby rod. So I'm going to come and define my my gaseous clouds here. This is wonderful practice if you're working on your clouds, guys. Wonderful practice. And you want to just enjoy this. This is just seriously. I think one of the most trending things right now on Pinterest is space paintings, John. Really? Yeah, it is. They're big. And I think a lot of people want galaxies and things in their life, but it's just hard to know how to do it. And a lot of the tutorials out there are just speed paints, which is super helpful for me, but maybe not as helpful for a brand, brand new artist. I still recommend everybody watch them though. And here's why, because as you pick up art language, you'll start to understand them and it'll start to help you. I'm going to pull some just thalo blue and come in and just deepen some of the pigments. See that? Just start creating some of the gas clouds. How oh, you've got going here. Just along here. You know, I'm going to get a little phthalo and come work it up here. Just the phthalo. Just trying to create that beautiful, rich pigmentation. And then like along this little turquoise bit. And I feel like this little area needs a little something. So I'm going to get a little white, a little phthalo. A dry. See how dry it is? The brush is dry. Are you with me, John? I heard noises Hi. in the kitchen, so I didn't know if you left me or that's just Luna. Well, no, I was looking. I had a little bag of, uh, of, of Swedish fish that I had as a prop that I can't find. Oh, I think um, Luna got him. Oh, did she? Yeah, yeah. You can't leave Swedish fish around Luna. It's just over really fast. <laughs> I'm going to pull uh, some just blue. <laughs> you know, I mean, I just don't know. It's like, you're not new here. You know that kid is, like, on Swedish fish. Yeah. Like, she is Swedish fish radar. If the bag comes out within reachable range, she's going to pile things up and get them. I'm seeing a little area out here that could be worked and looked for those. I'm going to just moisten my brush, such a, just literally touch the bristles into the water. And I'm going to just make sure there's this deep, deep, deep space blue happening here to the outside edge of my canvas. Can you guys see that? Yeah. Now, you can come up here in the middle, and I'm going to switch down to a smaller bright. I'm going to switch down to my number six bright. Also Simply Simmons, also extra firm. Mm-hmm. Pull a little white out, pull a little blue out. I've got some nice light. So just a couple places, I'm going to make sure I have some of this light purple. Not everywhere, just, just a couple places. I want some of the lighter purple. Maybe a little bit here. I'm going to wipe my brush off, but not rinse it. And I'm going to get my straight purple. And I'm going to come up the center and blending this purple. I haven't rinsed my brush, so there's still a little dusting of pigment of the white in there. And I'm going to just come in and make sure that I've got a nice definition of this coming up the center. So just making sure it's a little multi-tonal as well, but not a lot, guys. Don't, don't go crazy with it. Yeah. Right? You don't want a big white fluffy thing going up the middle of your Milky Way. You just want little kisses of that multi-tonal purple happening. And just take a little bit there. See? And I'm going to even work that out some right here that I've got right here. Just get got a little too. And wherever it gets away from you, you go back. And you're still dry brushing, right? Yeah, I'm still dry brushing. I'm going to get some blue, and I'm going to get some white. And I'm going to just make sure that this has got a nice tight edge there. 
These multi-tonal effects, though, they, they matter. I don't think that they don't, because they really do. So we're just pulling that up there. Get some more white. This one, gotta make sure it's got some lightness to it. I'm gonna make sure this cloud is maybe, I'm gonna lighten up this cloud a little bit. So like I said, I think about this space quite a lot. This space along here. Now the stars do a lot. Don't kid yourself, oh stars yeah. do a lot. They do. They do a lot for it. So when you get your stars in, it will make a huge difference. I'm going to pull that back out a little bit. So I'm pulling it away, making sure that there's some depth to this cloud. And I feel like there could be some more over here. And that's what you're looking for, is where could there be more of that? And I'm going to just make sure that this... All right, I think I'm ready to star. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, so starring is a little bit of a challenge. You definitely want clean water. Okay, do we have clean water? Oh, we do. And I have golden fluids. You can have any fluid body paint. You know what we're going to wish for here secretly while we do, while we do this? That my stars work? 30,000 stars. 30,000 stars? Yeah, because we're, we're I think we're we're like 40 stars away. From, from 30,000 30, stars. 30, 30, That's pretty stars. crazy. Let's not lose all our stars right now over the splatter. <laughs> so so what's the... T this is I, we've, I've watched the splatter technique a couple times. Which one so are you doing So this now? brush is Liquitex Freestyle. It, you're going to freestyle splatter. Okay. You can do this with a toothbrush. And I think it's nice to sometimes do some toothbrush and some of this splatter. So you have different kind of sizes of splatter. So it's great to mix it up. iCard has that extra splatter instruction in it that you can go watch that whole little splatter mini tutorial, which we could probably cut out of that video <laughs> <laughs> and make its own little mini tutorial. But if you happen to get the Freestyle Liquitex brush. The Freestyle Splatterer. So what I do is I tip this in the brush. See how I tipped it there? Yep. And then here's the trick. And I was actually telling mom this trick. See me squishing the bristles? You're kind of rolling the paint around I'm inside. Yeah, I'm rolling the paint around. Now, I, this part does involve a small amount of prayer. What were you at? Where you at? Okay. All right. Now, I'm going to be far back. All right. And I'm going to go. <laughs> and I'm going to start putting these stars in the sky. Pull a little more you can, paint. You can definitely see it better on the close-up camera. Can you? Yeah. All right. I'm going to roll my brush. Put these stars you can kind of see the in technique. the sky. I will show you in one spot how to fix it if your stars mess up. I like seeing how you, how you just use that whole brush just to flick. Right. And now you can do the whack, whack, whack. Which I've shown you in other videos. You can do the toothbrush splatter. Now they all do an equal amount of damage to the surrounding studio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all as hard on your granite. Th this one's particularly hard on lights in the ceiling. Yeah. It also does a... Also, I want my sky to be fairly starry. Ooh, so Mark is suggesting that you can make one of these by taking a weed eater line and cutting it in lengths and then duct taping that together and making yourself your own little brush. Mark, make a video. We'll iCard it in. Yeah. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know when it'll be there. I'm going to point there now. Mark, make a video. I'll iCard it in. Yep. All right. So we're going to pretend that I messed up. Okay, you did. Where, where did you mess up at? I didn't. We're going to pretend I messed up. Okay. Okay. First thing that I'm going to do, let's say that this is messed up. Okay. What we're going to say that's messed up. What's what? Like, like, say it did some stringies instead of splatters. Oh, right. Okay. Right. So you, you have a little stringy. So back. while it's still wet, I'm going to scrumble my stiff, stiff brush here. Oh, it kind of mutes out those stars. Right. Mute them out, and then I'm going to go get my just thalo blue. Oh, you put you put a layer of stars in. 
right? And then paint them out. Wherever it messes up, that's what you can do. Oh, that's so cool. Okay, so if it gives you weird splatters across here, you just go back and rework the technique across it and and work on your splatter again. Oh, nice. I'll put some stars back. Now, I like this brush a lot because it gives me a lot of different sizes of stars to deal with. Yeah. And I like the, the soft body paint because it does the similar thing. And that is quite enjoyable to me because I want a very starry sky. Yeah. Now, I am going to rinse this out. And it's pretty easy to rinse out. So, I'm a sippy sippy. Can I get my coffee microwaved? You can. Thank you. It got cold. We'll put 30 So, as you can see... Right? There you go. Lots of stars. Millions and billions and trillions of stars. And now your Milky Way galaxy. But is that enough? That is not enough. When If you saw me do, if you saw the black light galaxy where I painted a whole galaxy in black light, um, I did this thing where I lit up the stars and we had a, we had a time lapse of the whole painting ahead of time. And you could see the stars lighting it up and it really did look like they were just lighting in the sky. But you've got to have to really look like it's one of these super saturated pictures from Arcadia. You've got to have these overdone stars. So my best tool recommendation for that is, again, a fluid body paint. Now listen, you don't have a fluid bodied paint. You can mix your acrylic paint up 30% with water and not get underbinding. Now this is for Pro Paints. This is for Liquitex or Golden or Matisse. If, say, you're painting a Liquitex Basic, be sure and read their specification on the website. How much water can that paint take and still stick to the canvas? Those are the questions that you have to ask. But listen, you don't have to ask them that hard. Generally, it's on the website. It's totally answered. And then the other brush that I like to have, and I felt like I had them over here, but maybe I put them in here. Oh, here it is. Is a Micro Mini Detail. See how tiny that little brush is? So little. So you use a micro mini detail. Um, this is a zero. They come in packages. They're simply Simmons, so they're super inexpensive and highly functional. These are not stiff bristled, though. These are not the stiff, stiff bristles. So Linda, so you don't want them to be. Now Linda was asking, what's the difference between round and flat splatter brushes? The distribution of how they put paint on. Hmm. But I would still recommend rolling yeah. the paint. When Okay, so like say you want stringy splatters, right? Mm -hmm. Don't roll don't roll them. If you want dots, you've got to roll them. Um, they have a whole nother little experience when you use them with string gels. Mm. So it'll be how the string gel rolls off of them. Interesting. And uh, my recommendation is, if you look at the iCard, I have a black thing of foam core for test splatter. Test oh, yeah. splatter. Test your splatter. Always. Yeah. Now, I'm going to put some... I haven't really even got my brush wet. I'm going to put some paint on my little teeny tiny brush. I'm going to come up here in the corner. And I'm going to pick I'm gonna pick stars. I think I'll pick this star. And I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to make it a little bit rounder. Need to make sure my painting is dry when I do this because I rest my hand <laughs> right on the canvas. And I'm going to do a line straight up and a line straight down. See that? Yeah. And then I'm going to do a little line coming straight out to the side, straight out to the side. Mm -hmm. Then a diagonal down and a diagonal up. A diagonal down and a diagonal up. That's how I get the sparkly star. Now you the have an explanation for why they do that. Well, I'm gonna put one right here. Yeah, in uh, to the to the lower right. In the early astrophotography days, the uh, easy way to get a big telescope was building what was called a reflector, and that had two mirrors, one at the bottom and one at the top. When the top one is held in by these little uh, like thin pieces of metal or string that uh, that they're called spiders and they hold that mirror in the center of the tube so that when you take a picture the the light will reflect off those little pieces of metal holding up that center 
reflector. And that's what you're seeing there. Those is uh, little bits of light that have reflected off the, the spider on, uh, on a telescope's secondary lens when they're taking an astrophotography photo. So make kind of that neat effect on when you're taking out of a reflector telescope, those kinds of lines. Does that make mm -hmm. I messed this one up, so I'll show you how to fix that one. <laughs> no, I got off center. So if you get off center with your line, I'm going to get some just thalo, and I'm going to trim my line here. There you go. Just fix it. Hmm. Not that hard. If anything is just not working out, what you do is you allow it to dry and then you repaint it. That's all you've got to do. Yeah. Allow it to dry and then repaint it. And you will be good. Don't overload your brush. Don't put so much paint on it, it doesn't function. That is something that's going to make you super unhappy with your result. Now I'm going to do three little stars here. Mm -hmm. Tricks that I would recommend when you're when you're lighting up your sky. Okay. Not every star should have the same size refraction. Mm -hmm. Some of them should be bigger and some of them should be smaller. Different magnitudes. Yes, different magnitudes. Oh wait, look at you using words on me. Mm, just throwing some of them in there for you. I appreciate it. You guys at home, if you give this to a guy in your life. You'd be like, look, different magnitudes of stars. <laughs> 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 They'll really like it. <laughs> if they don't tell you already that they like it for that fact. See, I let some of the brushes be dry. It makes them feel sparkly, but yeah. dimmer and farther away. So if the paint is sort of dryly applied and put up there, then it makes it feel like a dimmer star. Is she asking to go in a pool? <laughs> we don't have a pool, so that's a weird <laughs> ask. Luna's back here joining me. <laughs> Come here, Luna. <laughs> Come in the back here and join me. I've figured out how to get a pool. <laughs> I'm going to flood everything. <laughs> It'll be great. So I'm going to put a little star where this little part of the band of the galaxy. And I'm going to just make sure some of that star goes into the expanse of space. Ooh. Expanse of space. Look at that. Expanse of space has a star. But its little friend will be bigger. <laughs> Luna's over here trying to hum ever, ever, ever more loudly so she can be involved. The good news is Lynn, Lynn is very li unlikely to get his content ID'd. Because <laughs> she sings her own song, literally. So I'm going to put one up here in the upper left. Actually, I may move it down a little bit. I don't want these two lined up, so I might move it down just a little bit over here. And I'll paint that star out in a second. Now, what, uh, what type of easel are you using there? I'm using the European Best. It's not like made in Europe. It's just called the European Style. And it's by the company BEST. Ah. Um, they make several large pro easels. Mm -hmm. um, I've used them my entire life. It's a Richard R Richardson Company USA. BEST. <laughs> There we go. That's the company. There you go. That's what it is. Love it. I gotta get. Yeah, it's just I gotta tell you guys, I love these easels. Um, they are so <sighs> their list price will run around twelve hundred dollars, but they're always on sale somewhere. Mm -hmm. So and and usually at half at least, at least half. 
yeah. of their list price. So what I would say is look for one that's on sale. Not that I'm trying to mess with best profit margin or anything. I'm just saying, as an artist, yeah, you gotta you gotta work your sales. Oh yeah, and they're a lifetime easel. Oh yeah, for sure. That's a yeah. You could you could honestly give this to your kids. Mm-hmm. Um, they're like uh, if you quilt. Let me put this in perspective. The best easel company is like the Bernina of the easel world. Yeah. Uh, they have an electronic one. Oh, you like, had one. Yeah, I did. I had an electronic one. Um, With the that pedals? was run by foot pedals. So if you couldn't adjust the screws and do the easy adjustments, it was all auto adjusted. This also lays flat like a table, mm -hmm. and will take up to a seventy-two inch canvas. Yeah, which is like crazy how big that is. Just saying, that's crazy big. I feel like another star. A little star needs to be right there. Far, far away, twinkling. Far, far away. And then I'm going to put a little, I'm going to put a little, because I just have to have a comment. <laughs> okay, you got to do it. I got to do a comment. I'm okay. sorry, guys. I got to have a comment. So I'm going to make a little dot here and then just make a light line come off and then maybe another little line. I just I get super light with the brush stroke. See a little comet? We do. All right, shooting star. Shooting star. So we have some twinkle stars. We have all this here. Now we've got to put up some trees. I'm gonna sip some coffee before I plant these all trees. Right. Yeah, it's that, and now it winds up pretty fast. Mm -hmm. It does. It goes pretty quick here. Get that. If you got through in. this. Breathe, pat yourself on the back. That was the hardest part of the whole painting. Believe it or not, the fire is not hard. Fire is pretty easy. Fire is relaxing. Painting the guy is not hard. Painting the trees are not hard. It's all pretty easy. Tips on trees. You're going to want to space your trees out and show them trunk all the way to the ground. Don't do that. Don't do it. Right? And I'm trying to think how I can prevent you guys from doing that because you don't want to do that. You want the trees to be so tight and dense that they become like a complete shadow and then just spires of them pull out of the shadow. So that'll be your trick to, to not do. Does that make sense, John? Did I explain that? Do I have John? Oh, he must have chased Luna out of the room. Not like chased her out of the room, but you know. Like, followed her to get her a snack or uh, a uh, t uh, cartoon. We're really loving The Good Dinosaur right now. If you have kids and you haven't seen that, I'm sure you have. But my kids are just loving The Good Dinosaur, like, a lot. And I really like the dinosaur that looks like a tree that wants his little friend. That is, like, my favorite dinosaur ever. Like, I could almost do a painting lesson of the tree dinosaur with all the little animals on it. I'm just in love with it. I want a stuffy of it. I want a shirt of it. I'm like so team that guy. He protects you. I just <laughs> it's killer. I don't know if you guys saw the good dinosaur, but it's literally worth sitting down and watching the whole thing with your kids. We had a really funny moment. Um, this is a spoiler, so if you've got a kid with you, cover their ears if they haven't seen it. Spoiler. Cover kids' ears. So we're sitting there watching it, and I, I don't know who's made this movie, right? I just, I'm just out of touch. And I say to John, I'm like, John, and all the kids were all watching. And I'm not thinking how you're tired at the end of the day as a parent. You're just all on the sofa piled up like puppies. So we're all on the sofa piled up like puppies. And I, I'm like, hey, John, what movie is this? And John's like, Disney. I'm like, oh, God, the parents are dead. And my kids are like, what oh, no. do you mean the parents are dead? <laughs> and then, of course, the dad dies. And, and Honey's like, what is wrong with them? She's like, that didn't even help the story. Like, my kids felt the whole time it was just unnecessary that, that the dinosaur could have gotten lost and had the whole adventure and not have Dad die. We've been just fine. And, and, and they were like, are you sure every Disney movie? And I'm like, count it out. May Baymax is killing whole sections of the family. Just saying. <laughs> that kid's going to have no living genetic relatives <laughs> in a minute. <laughs> so... 
just some rough storytelling. Anyways, love the tree dinosaur. John's back. Don't down thumb me because I talked. Good Lord. <laughs> I think they're all still here. So, we, you know, we've got about 220 people hanging out with us right Woo-hoo. now. They really enjoyed it. This has got to be a pretty big birthday party for Mona. This is a wonderful birthday party for Mona. And I'm so glad you guys came. I'm so glad you guys share these. I'm so glad you guys pass these on. I have a number four bright. And I like brights because they have a sharp edge. And they give me a nice line. So I'm going to show you how to avoid the the sticks, the planted sticks. Mm-hmm. But we're going to start out by actually planting sticks. So over from the left up to about almost this star, like right to about here, which is, uh, let's say, hand down. I'm going to draw up a little trunk. Little trunk, grow to the sky. And like that. Nice. Okay. Now, it's just a little bit below my white, but not all the way down. And then next to it, about an inch over, inch and a half over, I'm going to plant another little trunk, but I'm going to stop it at about here. They don't, interestingly enough, have to be straight lines, guys, which is fabulous if straight lines are not your friend. Gotcha. It's okay if they tip a little bit, which is really good for me. Now, the next one I'm going to do a little shorter. It's going to be about an inch over, but it's going to be shorter. It's going to come to about here. So you kind of see this going down, but I'm going to change it up. Yeah. I'm going to change it up. I'm going to come over a little bit, and I'm going to make this guy a little bit taller. Ah, ha, 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 because trees aren't orderly. Next one, however, is going to be a lot shorter. It's going to come here. Then I'm going to have a little one here. Shorter. 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 Just a little spire. But this one will come up a little bit there. See, it's like real short right here. Yeah. Okay. There, there. So I'm trying to really show my work right here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to bring up another little guy right here. It's going to be longer. Uh huh. Now I'm going to stand in front of my canvas because I can see that I'm getting... What happens is if you stand offside your canvas when you're teaching, you get um, a little offside. <laughs> so I'm going to just sort of straighten that up. All right. Now I'm going to come over. But I'm going to do a short one again. What the heck? It's short. Hey, but then a long one. Long, 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 long. Maybe a little mini here. We'll see how that goes. We'll plan him and see how he is. Come up, 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 up. And then one very tall one way over here. And you'll notice I'm not that worried about my trees being the straightest thing that ever was. Mm -hmm. Because the way I'm laying my leaves in. So I can stand weird sideways and paint to the side. I can, <laughs> if I can stand on my feet there, I'm just going down. I'm going to load up my brush. And I am using soft body paint. And it does help me because it dispenses very easily. But like I said... You can make it fluid by adding water. And here I come. I'm going to maybe zoom in a little bit there so you can kind of see how I do this. There you go. So what I do is I go dab, 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 dab. Yeah. And then I dab a little bit up like this. And it's a little upward dab. Huh. Dabbing a little bit upward. Now, listen, if you're the fan brush person and you want to fan brush your trees in and do a fan brush technique... Because you just did some Donna Dewberry stuff and you love it, uh, it will not hurt the painting. <laughs> and you could, you could, you could. There's all different techniques to this. You could do. There the, is. You could. There's a bob technique for getting happy trees in there. And and it's okay to use the bob. I'm not gonna freak out and I'm not gonna turn you into Bob's people. <laughs> and and then there's your your uh, your Jackie Chan yeah style, which is what I'm doing here. Which I'm is doing right now. You're Jackie Chaning it. So one of the things that I do is as I come down here and as I'm coming down this space, the tree gets thicker and bushier. See it get thicker and bushier? But maybe this little branch isn't, but then overall this tree is thicker and bushier. For me, I like this type of pine. Um, John will tell you he's camped a lot. It feels like the pines that I see when I look at their silhouettes. They're kind of a hot mess. Right? Now, down here, though, it's going to get real heavy because... But look at 
look at what I'm doing though. Look at the spaces I'm leaving. Can you see the spaces? Yes, yes, when you're not shaking the camera, I can. Okay, can you see the spaces? <laughs> yeah, we can see. Okay. <laughs> they look really cool. You need them. They're important. It's going to be solid black below this, and you want it to be solid black below this, right? Don't mm -hmm. keep taking these down and then leave them. You don't want to do that. <laughs> Oops, going the other way. <laughs> All right, so hopefully, does that, does anyone have any questions about how we're laying in the trees after, like, I've given that explanation, but, like, here's the thing, you're there painting the trees, you have this tree in your mind, you know, I'm, you can see me dabbing, and then, oh, here's another little trick. What's that? So, I dab hard at the trunk, but then as I'm coming out, my dab lightens, and that's how the tree oh. gets narrower. That might not be something that you would necessarily yeah. pick on as a visual cue. So besides making sure some of the branches are bigger and smaller, that overall the tree gets bigger as it comes down, I'm also making sure press harder at the trunk, but as I come out here, lighter, and I leave holes. Leave holes for the birds to fly through. Best thing I ever heard um, at a plein air landscape courses leave holes for the birds to fly through because <laughs> i don't know some really good artists were painting some lollipops we need we need we need holes for stars to shine through holes for the stars to shine through now as you're coming down here it can get more solid though mm -hmm. and you'll be making it more solid you can flip the brush to the wide and fill that space in all right see how that's going yeah in this beautiful boy are you gonna blow your friends minds they're gonna be like quit your job be a painter because it's so funny like when you're young and you say i want to be a painter everybody acts like you said i would like to go be a trapeze artist <laughs> on the moon <laughs> on the moon <laughs> i think i can make a living at it <laughs> and they're like you're gonna die you're gonna be dead in, in the street <laughs> I really have known a lot of artists, and, and there are very few artists that are starving on the street. <laughs> and generally, if you see an artist on the street, they're doing some art. They're intentionally, they're, they're, they're urban artists, and dude, they're in right now, so don't even feel that bad yeah. for them. <laughs> you should ask them what they're up to. I love how graffiti artists now are artist artists. Like, yeah. it's a thing. I have a, I have a friend, Scott Tarbox. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's a maybe he's a he's a friend slash uh, art retreat acquaintance, mm -hmm. but I really dig his art and he does street art here and I keep wanting to have him come out to the studio and us to do some street art stuff, but he's just fabulous. If you were to say be in Houston and see Scott, he's not homeless. He's really well paid. He's good at what he does. You can hire him. <laughs> he's an Instagram account. <laughs> <laughs> he's super popular. He's huge on the gram. So see how I'm kind of just shaping these branches out. I do. Right? Now, one thing is very interesting. Pines in Houston, the branches go down. But pines in other places, their branches might arc up. And that is depending on the type of pine. There's a whole bunch of pines, but then there's this one pine beetle and it eats them. That's terrible for the pines. <laughs> no pines. This, this forest has no pine beetles. No one. Does is anyone else totally reminded by Negrolero by this painting? I, I think it's pretty cool. He, I, I, you know what? I, I will not lie. I, the dog idea came from him. Yeah. Because if you watch his videos, not only does he paint outdoors, he's a really well-behaved dog. Like the kind of dog that they have in a movie that like goes and barks at people and saves lives of people in a well. <laughs> he's one of those dogs. That's awesome. <laughs> a really cool dog. Yeah, we're doing that there. Yeah. And it just feels like real trees, doesn't it? It does. I it love it. It does. It just feels like real trees. And this is one of those places. Go ahead and relax. Go ahead. Another thing, I don't know if you can see it there. Sometimes when I'm dabbing up, I allow some of the dabs to not be connected. Trick. Oh, yeah. That's a big artist trick. 
I let your eye connect them. I know I talk to you guys about this all the time, about letting the viewer be the painter. Yeah. Sometimes the viewer needs to be the painter. They're going to do a better job than you. So leave something for them to work out in any painting, whether it's representational art. I don't care if you're a hyper-realist. The great hyper-realists leave something for the viewer to resolve. Yeah. To understand or work out. The illus- when, uh, like a lot of times when somebody's like, that's an illustrationist, it's because they're leaving nothing for the viewer to work out. It's um. not just about the technique. If it's used correctly. Which a lot of times in the art world is not. <laughs> they'll be like, if you're just representational, they'll be like, you're an illustrationist. But an illustrationist's job is to tell the story. An artist's job is to cause the viewer to finish the story. I mean, he may not be my favorite, but Kincaid did make you finish that story, didn't he? Yeah. Who lives in that house? Why are they there? Where is that house? <laughs> Such a pretty house. Who planted that garden? It's a really good garden. You start asking yourself questions. Why don't I garden like that? <laughs> See, that's a good painting. And that's what you've got to do, no matter where you are in your art journey, is you've got to get the viewer to engage with your painting and finish the story. Like, we wonder about this guy and his dog. Yeah. What's he doing? What's he doing? Why What's is he here? On? What's he, is he, is he, is it, is it marshmallow time or harmonica time? What is, is he, is he whittling? Could be. He could be whittling at this moment. He could be playing Angry Birds on his cell phone. He could, do. yeah, he could totally be playing Angry Birds on his cell phone. He could be calling into the Rebel Alliance, saying that he's landed ahead on the forest moon. If he's on indoor, he's dead. Him and his dog are food. (laughs) That's how they get clothes for visitors. (laughs) 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 Just saying. (laughs) I'm going to fill that in a little bit. All right. I'm not painting. I have to paint around his hat. Paint this little tree in Mm -hmm. this happy little tree. He lives in the forest. Nobody cuts him down because he's in a national forest Mm -hmm. somewhere where they love trees. He's not going to be a house. No. He will only ever be a tree. Happy being himself. He knows who he is. He likes it. (laughs) 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 Every tree has a story. Every tree does. Every tree has a personality and he has a purpose and they know who they are and they don't try to be, they don't try to be a duck. They're not like, hey, only ducks are good. You have to be a duck to be happy. What are you, what? What am I saying? I have no idea. How do we get to ducks? I'm just saying sometimes we try to be everything but ourselves. We try to be everything but a tree. That's just foul play. know where you sit (laughs) (laughs) just dude you're so funny that's why i married you you're funny (laughs) i have a singular wit (laughs) (laughs) i love it so i'm still leaving room for stars and john's wit to shine (laughs) through gosh he's so funny how does he do that i don't i don't do anything i just sit here push buttons no you're so funny You're so funny. You've made art funny, John. Puns hurt everyone equally. I think they do. And you've made art funny. And art needed to be funny. It needed to be. Mm -hmm. Do you hear me? It needed to be funny. So I'm just making this lovely... Isn't this just a great tree line? Now look, you could literally just paint it black down from here and be done. And be like, I painted space. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> and it's <just> totally fine. <laughs> they wouldn't know. It's like the whole space was painted. Yeah. They, if if you just did it black down from your tree line, you could say it was done. It's still a painting, a painted space. It goes with my it goes with my um, aurora borealis. Yeah. You could flip over to my aurora borealis thing and just put an aurora borealis ribbon right here. Oh, you could do. You could. Death star right there. Yep. 
And then it would be indoor. <laughs> and then it would be indoor. <laughs> and people would be like, look, it's a painting of indoor. And then you could like, put little eyes glowing in the forest waiting to eat visitors. <laughs> Ewoks. Land piranha. <laughs> furry, furry land piranha. <laughs> At some point, someone's going to be like, first of all, what is an Ewok? And why are you so afraid of them? But like, here's this. All right, so I'm the Empire, and I'm looking for soldiers, right? Wouldn't you conscript the little furry things that kicked the bottom of all your soldiers? <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't you be like, man, like five Ewoks just took out a... at at <laughs> <laughs> With sticks! <laughs> We should get them in the, re you know, the Empire. Somebody needed to, like, get the Ewoks involved. Yeah. Because the Ewoks, like, they were on another level. But no, we went and grabbed Jar Jar Binks. I will never understand that. <laughs> yeah. Like, how every other movie wasn't like, go get the Ewoks. Like, we got a problem. Yeah. I got an Ewok. I have an Ewok mercenary. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> Like, the Jabba the Hutt didn't have... Like, Boba Fett was pretty cool, but I think an Ewok would have owned him. Yeah, had like 10 of those on a chain in front of him. <laughs> a little carpet of them. <laughs> oh, too much. <laughs> wow, you're taking a strange turn today. You know what? I'm going to get a down thumb, and then somebody's going to say, Enough talking about the Ewoks. It makes me so mad. <laughs> You talk too much. Really? I'll watch a time lapse. <laughs> my no mom, talking. I think my mom made me an Ewok costume. That was like my first real Halloween costume that she made me. I think she did too. I was, I was an Ewok. I am going to have solid up here lighter in the black, so I'm filling it in a little wider as I'm coming down and s solidifying it up because I think all the way up here I'm going to have it be solid black. Yeah. So that's just something I want to let you know. Yeah, she did. She made you an Ewok costume. Make sure it's solid there. All right, so I solid it in. Guess what? I'm going to paint this black solid around the outline of my drawing. Mm -hmm. What do you think of that? Awesome. I think it'd be awesome. Simple. <laughs> it's a simple problem you can solve. You're going to lose the brim of his hat. You'll have to paint it back in. Okay. How do, well, how do you do that? If well, it's a black? good thing I will cover. I have to, I have to do it too, yeah. so I'll <laughs> tell you when I do it. Yeah. I'm like, wait, how are you going to do that? Now, I'm going to move his bush up higher up the hill, but I'm just going to follow my current line around. All right. Because I want solid black um, around the bush. Not being funny. But I know Mark's in here cracking a joke. I can feel the disturbance in the force. <laughs> <laughs> I love that we have so many people that get our Star Wars <laughs> jokes. <laughs> it's such a relief, isn't it? Yeah. Because like the rest of the time, you like pretend to be normal, pretend to be normal. <laughs> like a lot of art places, I'm like, I'm like very pretend to be normal. Don't let them know. Don't let them know. So I'm just painting this solid black. And you're like, but how is he going to be in silhouette? Yeah. Right? Would, I'm kind of wondering that myself. Right? It's an interesting question, isn't it? How do we do that? Which is why I like to have the ultramarine blue here, but you don't have to do it with ultramarine blue. But I'll show you how with the use of ultramarine blue. Uh-oh. I'm going to have to fix that hat later. It's okay. It's all right. And I may adjust his shape as I uh, see fit. Yeah. You know, right now I'm just painting this in. So you see how this prevents me from doing the sticks to the ground. See? There's no way for me to do sticks to the ground. Because we can't see the ground. To get the rest of this effect, you cannot do sticks to the ground. Hmm. Now, yes, we could have done a much simpler campfire, but I hope we're happy with this because this is really pretty. I would own this painting. I do own this painting. I own two of them. <laughs> <laughs> I own it. I own it. I'm surprised you didn't catch me grabbing the bottle. Sometimes John is so on it like he catches every single move that I make. Sometimes. What are you doing? <laughs> 
trying to make me like watch your different pages now. <laughs> I'm trying to read comments here. Stop hacking me. <laughs> read the comments. We've got another uh, quest this Thursday. Do a little color wheel. Talk about the color wheel a little bit. And then this Saturday, we're doing a super simple cornflowers. Great first painting. And I think that's going to be in American Sign Language as mm -hmm. well. Simul isn't it? Yeah. I have it listed as that, so I hope so. <laughs> Don't like to mess with people at all. So I'm just painting this all black. Right now. Just for right now. Around really this bush. Cool. Make sure this is here. And so around the dog. What? what so when are we going to start doing our, our next, the color wheel? Thursday. Thursday. Thursday is the beginning of a color wheel. I just realized I'm sitting here reading comments and I should talk to you because I'm just reading along and people are. Sometimes it's just interesting. They have a whole lot of cool stuff that's good. They're just talking to each other. Sometimes I know. It's it, uh, that's to why you took my comments away because they were so interesting that I stopped teaching the painting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Elizabeth wanted me to pass along that she loves your outfit. She loves all the purple. Purple, purple, purple is my favorite color. I'm a purple unicorn. That's true. I am. Purple unicorn. See, now you know everything about me, don't you? Everything is important. It's a purple unicorn. I, I hope someone's out on a date and honestly asks their date. Favorite color, favorite animal. <laughs> so are we going to be making a color wheel? Yes. Ooh. We're going to be looking at my dinosaur color wheel. <laughs> and we're also going to be making a color wheel. Interesting. And talking about what they mean when they're talking about these warm and cool colors. And why it can be hard to tell the difference between whether a color is cooler or warmer than another. Though the one where we really, really tell, we're going to do in a whole separate epi episode because that's, that's yeah. its own involved thing. But right now we're just going to we're going to introduce the idea, this color wheel thing. What is it? Why do we care? Right. <laughs> what is it? Why do we care? And then we come back with a little brown and black later. They love your sky. Isn't that nice? Yeah. That is lovely. So lovely. Now, you get a lot of your hats and aprons through Etsy and Etsy. Place. Yeah. I love me Etsy cra artisans and crafters and, you know, when I can get a hat, I get one from Etsy. But, you know, you guys can send me a hat if you're hookers. Mm. You hookers can send me a hat. I'm not even being rude. That's what uh, crochet people call themselves. Ooh. Anne <laughs> says uh, the Monoceros is a faint constellation. I may be pronouncing that correctly. Monoceros, it looks look like how he says, is a faint constellation on the on the celestial on the celestial equi uh, equator, and it's a unicorn constellation. So we're definitely gonna have to go find that very faint celestial body. Yeah, pull that in the search. I will, I, and and we'll we'll be doing something with that in the future. Space unicorn. Don't content ID me. Look up space unicorn. We're gonna be doing it. Look, no, but no. Just in general, look up the song "Space Unicorn." Oh, you're make it your ringtone. <laughs> Go look it up. Make it your ringtone. I do. I I, I found this <laughs> constellation. Did you? Yes, it's near Canis Minor. All right, so and I've Orion. got the oh. ultramarine blue. I'm gonna put it here. Okay, and I'm gonna use ultramarine group blue in my gray. Now, yes, you could do thalo. But the trick is, is the phthalo has one kind of feeling and the ultramarine has another. It goes more violet. And so it's going to feel like this is different shadow. Mm -hmm. Just a trick. But you could do it with phthalo. If you did not have ultramarine blue, I mean, uh, ultramarine blue, go ahead and phthalo it up. So I'm going to put a little ultramarine blue. Get a little white. I'm going to take it over my black. And I'm going to make a gray. A very dark gray. This will also help it stand out from this black background. Don't paint it the same color as your background or you're never going to find your way out. 
And we're going to be warming up areas around the dog or possibly wolf. My son thinks this is a wolf. Mm-hmm. All right. And we'll darken areas of these guys up. Yeah. But right now, we're just getting that first layer of paint in. Right? Yeah. It's looking really, really cool. I like this. Yeah. It's super cool. Everyone says that they love the sky. They're just loving how this is coming together. It just works, man. And I have to say, it's 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 magic when the when the the fire campfire goes in. Yeah. How it just kind of goes. Whoo. Yeah, it is super magic. The campfire bit is magic, and it makes the lighting these guys makes it just mm -hmm. you just feel the flicker. I love painting the flicker of light. Yep. Paint your flicker. Now, if one were to say that we were on indoor, that would probably be a boar wolf. <laughs> yes, it would. But wouldn't it really be eating him? No. Not you know, if it was a pet boar wolf. Pet boar wolf. You know, domesticated. But then the Ewoks would come eat it. Where it is a hat. <laughs> <laughs> They'd come eat it and wear it as a hat. <laughs> and that, too, is not cute. <laughs> Uh, if you were like out in the woods and let's just say a panda bear ambled up on you and I mean panda but it was wearing a mountain lion as a hat how disturbing <laughs> would that be? <laughs> <laughs> would you be just genuinely freaked out? I would be. <laughs> <laughs> just not to take you to Dorkington but dude... So I'm just painting this in. And, and this ends up being almost a gunmetal gray. Mm -hmm. And we're going to come back with a little uh, burnt sienna and black and start to warm all this up. And the, these will start to pull and pull and it will be awesome. Awesome, I tell you. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So one of the things that's slowing me down right now mm -hmm. is that I'm using too small of a brush, but I want to have a crisp edge. Ah. Which brush are you using? A number four bright. Oh, that is small. Yeah. I think as I had it in my hand from the trees. That's all that happened there. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to catch my edges and probably paint in with a with a bigger brush. Like you do. Speed this thing up, man. <laughs> Been in this painting part too long. I'm not into it. <laughs> Getting those crisp lines in there, though. Those are important. Those are important. I love this little kind of triangle nose of a face. Mm-hmm. Because it could be a whole bunch of different breeds of dog. Whatever he is, though, he's solid. Yep. Honestly, you know what dog I was thinking about when I did him though? What's that? Was an Australian cattle dog. Oh yeah, yeah. It kind of has that 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 the feeling of that. Except that brick. The, the tail curves on them up, doesn't it? A bit more. Yeah. They ro the, the tail rolls over the top. Uh no, I, d I actually don't think they have the tail. Because remember we had a dog Lilu. She is an Australian, and she, her tail curled over on top. I think she was border collie too, though. She may have been half. She may have been yeah, half. there was a whole bunch going on with Lilu. <laughs> She's a good dog, though. She was. Like, she was one of these people, like, if you were having a fight, she didn't want you to fight, she'd bring you a ball. Yeah. Because <laughs> she's like, let's play ball. That always makes me feel better. You'd much rather play ball than whatever it is you're doing. <laughs> Y'all you seem upset. Ball. <laughs> she was a fly ball dog, though. She was a fly ball dog. I don't know if you guys have dogs, but if you have dogs and you play fly ball, we played fly ball with our dog. Mm. It was a good game. Though, you know what? She was right. Yeah? Well, think about it. Like, whenever yeah. we started to play ball, we always stopped being stressed out. That's true. <laughs> Dog called it. <laughs> Dog was dead on right about that. It's looking so cool. And it, like, there's this point where even when it's, like, kind of weird and off, it's still really on. <laughs> like, even right now with this weird shadow, it still sort of works. 
So there's an in, there, there's a, a question that you'll love up in here. Okay. I'm gonna go back and make sure I got who answered asked it though. Here it is. Valerie was asking. She she wanted to know for all the hookers in the audience what size your head is. Dude, I don't know. How do we find out? We measure. Really? Like how many inches around and yeah. stuff? Although Sass says that the average hat size for a female adult is 21 inches. So we'll have to see. Like now we're going to find out if I have a big or small head. We're going to know. Compared to the average. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm, I may come over and stunt hands your head at the end. Yeah, come over it. I'm curious. <laughs> we'll post it in the comments. Yeah. My head size. Is, people are going to be like, what? You know, I have been surprised because, you know, nowadays um, mm -hmm. everybody wants to have YouTubers, like, put everything in there. Mm -hmm. Like, I just got approached by a pillow company to put some pillow in my background. <laughs> they were like, we'll give you a pillow if you put it in our background, your background of your video. Huh. And I was like, that eh, okay, I don't really know how that will help you, but fine. <laughs> But I'm surprised hat companies aren't, like, bugging me all the time. <laughs> you would think they would be, right? Yeah, it's true. Like, what's the deal, hat companies? Oops, I got a little big there. To paint that back. I made a leg too big, guys. To paint it back when I fix it. To fix it. Just trying to get him in so this can get sealed. You know how these inexpensive canvases are? Mm-hmm. <sighs> We still have fire and shadows to do. How are we doing on time? We're uh, good. Okay, cool. I guess. <laughs> Relative to what? <laughs> Taking Spider up from the bus. Oh, yeah, he's fine. Okay. We've got lots of time for Spider. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's always what I'm worried about is make the bus. Because they get so upset, the kids and the school, if you don't make the bus. It's somehow Spider. Spider's like, I got to ride the bus there. I got to ride the bus back. <laughs> Yeah, like there's just not enough bus riding for him in general. Yeah. Now, what size canvas are you working with here? 16 by 20, and we have the centimeter conversion in the description. Interesting. So if you need to know what centimeters it is, we've got it in the description. And if you need to know what inches it is, we've got it in the description. Gotcha. We do not have the cubits in the description. Hmm. That's a biblical measurement. I know what a cubit is. Oh, okay. <laughs> just, oh, that's right. You were like... Fully almost a priest. You <laughs> probably do. <laughs> I'm just saying. We had to do maths in cubits. Well, considering they're just guessing what that looks like. No, they, don't, they don't know what a cubit is. Look, dude, it's we know distance. that was a lot of arc, right? <laughs> if, I, if, I, if I remember, like a cubit is the distance from like the elbow to the tip of the finger or something like that. And like, I don't know. There's actually a, a real measurement for a cubit. Yeah. But yeah, they translated to something a long time ago. That we don't use now. That we don't use now. Because nobody's building arcs. Well, and, and we all converted to the metric system, except for America, who said, we don't do math. <laughs> That's really <laughs> what we said, isn't it? <sighs> <sighs> all right. So now we've got that laid in, and we can kind of see their shadow, the beginning of their experience in the woods, right? Yep. I'm going to take advantage of my third cup of water. You may need to clear one of these. Okay. I'll do that. Thank you. And I might need two, uh, one more cup, one more cup. He's so nice. I so appreciate it. So I'm going to pull out my burnt sienna. Burnt sienna. It's a very good burnt paint. Put it out. So the first warmth that I'm going to put down into this area and I'm going to use my duh, 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 number eight bright. But you could probably get away with a six or a ten. It's fine. I'm just going to use my number eight. And I'm going to take a little of my burnt over to my black. Because I don't want it to be quite as bright as the burnt. Oh. Okay. I don't, you're right. My coffee's going. No, it's just gone. Okay, I'm gonna get. Okay, wait. I'm waiting. See, this is this is important. We're gonna do this th again. This is one of those things where you know I gotta be over here to push the button in order for them to see I it. I don't know. You know, I get like on the painting train. All right, so we're gonna go here. Okay. I'm gonna take a little of my burnt sienna over here, and I'm making like a mess. 
No. You're mixing? A deep, dark chocolate. Oh, okay. Okay. And I'm going to, I want it to be just like a little bit brighter. I don't even know if you can see I it can on this see camera. a little bit. Right? <laughs> but well, it's, see, see some brown here. See, that's what I'm saying. I've got the cameras adjusted to right? two different areas. And I'm areas. just dabbing this up the tree a little bit. This is the deep, dark chocolate. Yeah, it's hard because of the angle of reflection. You can see it on the wide camera better than you can. Okay. Closely. So I don't know if we can adjust or anything. I'm going to do this around here. I'm not going to be perfect about it. It's just going to be kind of up in the... Okay. So when burning... Up. What? Okay. Okay, so burning. When, when burning your paints, is there a difference between sienna and umber? Yes. Sienna is a warmer orange color and umber is a cooler browner color. Okay. So and also more translucent. So more transparent. Burnt. So... so and, and burnt is deeper than raw. Gotcha. We'll go over that if you guys want to go over browns and burnts and stuff like that. So, so I'm and just warming this area. I go up into the trees a little bit. I'm just warming this area into the trees a little bit. Less is more, guys. If you go too warm, if you go too brown, it, the, it will feel like the light from the fire is going too far out. Gotcha. Right? So I'm going to leave this fairly black back here, but I'm going to start dabbing at my third tree. And I'm just sort of dabbing here. And i am got this soft brush stroke. Let's see if I can, if you guys, I don't know if you guys can see it. So the wide camera actually picks up the brown more because it's, it's. remember how we had all that funny uh, yeah. light balance at the well, It was because I was trying to get these subtleties. What so. I'll say is, is that. I'm going to go over and adjust this one up some more. Yeah. See if you can catch it. I'm just going to, a little bit. This doesn't need to be as perfect as the black, and the black can show through. You're literally just implying that there's some light that's illuminating the woods. And you want it to go a little bit back into the woods. When you're painting a fire, when you're painting a lantern, when you're painting a light bulb, what you paint more than anything else is the way that light spreads out. Okay, so yeah. I'm just, now I've got this here, but it's, it's, I get a little more brown here where the fire would be. And I'm pulling this here. Whoops. Uh oh. All right, so we got this. We'll take this up the trees a little bit. Up the trees a little bit. Not a lot. Up the tree a little bit. Up this tree a little bit. Don't paint. Don't lose your dots. Don't lose the hard work you did. Use them as your guide. I do. We need a hug. Oh, she's having big hugs. She's doing the little squeakums. <laughs> she is making little squeaky noises. All right. So, oh, is it our lips? Was her lips earlier? We're bugging her. No, she's just got a little, little, little. Okay, so you can kind of see. Hopefully, gosh, I hope you can see where that. Oh wow, it is really hard to pick up. It does. Okay, all right, because it just feels like it's not seeing the brown at all. We're gonna let that dry for a second. Right. Now, now that we're letting that dry for the second, we're going to take the ultramarine blue and the black. And just a little bit, I want you to come here, but leave the gray outline there with this just blue and the black. And leave this little gray outline here, and deepen this. I'm going to put out a little more ultramarine blue. Just working this just a titch. Just the blue and the black. Yeah. I'm working it down here. I'm not going to paint out everything I painted in at all. And I'm going to let some of it peek through the canvas. Because paintings are like layers. Ogres are like layers. A lot of layering. Always, always, always. I'm going to come up 
this half of the tail and add a little of this, but not on the front half. And I might take this dark color on the back of the dog and pull it a little bit forward. Do you see that kind of rounded stroke where I kind of pull it forward? Right. I'm going to very carefully kind of come up the back of the ear a little bit, cross the head a little bit, back of the ear. I'm going to leave the front of him highlighted. Come here. All right. I'm going to stop while he's doing this. So we're just deepening a shadow, but then we're going to come back with some highlights. And it's going to just pull them into their own part of their picture plane. And when painting in dark colors or dark layers, that's what you're trying to do is to pull each thing into its own picture plane. So by utilizing the ultramarine blue here against the burnt umber here, the orange of the burnt umber and the blue creates plain, plainer spaces in the canvas. That's what we're actually doing. You there, John? Yeah. Okay, because I, I, I heard you in the other room with Luna giving her hugs. So I'm going to come in here. And I've just got this nice. And it's okay that some of this blue will streak into this. And it's okay. That's fine. You want some of that to actually happen. I'm going to kind of leaving a little outline on the leg, though, that's lighter. You see that, John? Yeah, leaving a little yeah, outline. Sometimes when we're doing darker paintings, it can be a challenge because seeing those tonal differences in the camera is difficult, but in real life, they are a big, big deal. Yeah. And they make the painting. So I'm going to just on his left side, leave a little of this gray. I let it get real blue there. I don't know if you can see how blue it got right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see that here. Right. I'm going to come into his head. You have to adjust your close-up camera next time around, but you're doing okay. good there. All right. Du -du 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 -du. I'm going to have to work out his um, hat. Now, on this far side, he can be darker. So that's okay. Why is that? Because the fire is right here, okay, and it's how it's catching around him. So, like, right back through here is going to be the most in shadow that he's going to be. Right here is the most in shadow. Mm. Oh, I see. Yeah. yeah. So I kind of know that even though I don't have a model to look at, I know that's probably true. <laughs> and by making those little adjustments, I can make his story seem more real. Mm -hmm. Okay, pulling out a little more ultramarine blue, probably more than I needed. Jess is saying that she thinks it looks cool enough as it is. It doesn't need the fire. Oh, wait till you see I put the cool shadows and highlights on here. It's yeah. like they're just sitting outside in the woods observing the stars. And there is a point, and I want to, this is why I did this in this order, because I'm going to show you there's a cool highlight I'm going to do. That it's like the sky is highlighting them. Then it's just like they're in the woods. So if you just did the brown, the trees, and the highlights, then boom. You just have a couple of guy, a, a guy and his dog out at night. Which is pretty cool, mm -hmm. if I do say so myself. And uh, Michelle was asking why you're using some shadows in blue and in black and brown. Because well, I think we just um, yeah yeah we, that's we, the lay add the layers of, of darkness. Yeah, because the orange of the brown versus the cool of the blue creates plainer layers. It pulls them apart. Yeah, it it makes them feel very distinct. Because let's be honest, this is not distinct. These are just spaces on a canvas. Mm -hmm. These aren't real. We're pretending. Are you saying that there is no forest moon of Endor? I would never say that. I'm just saying this may not be the forest moon of Endor. <laughs> 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 so when I have that in, okay, a couple things I'm going to do. I'm going to pull my smallest bright, yep. which is my four right here. And I'm going to make sure, right, that with my darkest color that I come and redefine his hat. We'll pull a hat across here. And I don't know how easy it's going to be to see on camera. 
but it needs to be there. And we're going to see it more when it has a highlight. Yeah. So you've got a little black in your blue, but still mostly blue. You're going to come make a highlight. Can you see that color? Yeah. And we're going to come along him and pull that out, maybe even up along his ear. Pull it back. And then here, as we get down to the bottom, let me make sure I've got this really showing. This is really fun to me. I'm going to come on this edge and highlight, 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 uh -huh. and then make a little shadow, little highlight there. I'm gonna highlight this right here. Okay, maybe even go more into his tail, work that out a little more in his tail. And you can come along his black back just a little bit. Okay, a little bit on that ear. On your bush. Go bush, 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 bush. Very similar to what you were doing up in the, you in the trees. Close up camera there. Do we need a close up camera there? All right, let's talk about the bush, 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 bush. So I've got a little bit of black in ultramarine blue and a smidge of the white, right? And I'm dab, dab, dabbing. I'll come back and I'm just dab, dab, dabbing. What I'm saying is that there is a plant of some kind here. Now, even if I never came back with the orange, and let me tell you, once I've used the ultramarine blue, when I come back with these cad oranges, it's on another level. Because of the way that ultramarine and cad are to each other on the color wheel, it will feel as if they are lit up by a warm light. And I'm coming over here, and I'm making a second layer of bush. Yeah. Right? You have to adjust your close-up camera down there. Okay. can't see it. I'm about to come back up and make a uh, layer of twig. A twig? So, twig. So come up from here, just an imaginary place, and I'm going to draw a little twig. See the twig? I a do. little twig here. It's a faint twig. It's a faint twig. When I light it up, it's not a faint twig anymore. But Why is it so faint? Because it's just cool. It's in the dark right now. So right now, this is what you're... It's just this is if they didn't light a fire, what the forest would look like. The moon glow is just, is just gently... Gently, gently, the, night, the light of the stars is lighting them up. Now I have to say, I've been out camping a lot. And I really like it when there's, when, when there's just enough glow from the sky that yeah. it casts shadows. It's a special thing. That's awesome. So I'm just pulling that over a little bit. See how I'm rounding them out a little bit? Creating that shape. Saying this is happening. A little bit on this head. Come and, you know, talk about the hat a little bit. Let me pull a lip there. Look at that little brim. Mm -hmm. Caught on there. And then a little bit of this blue on his hat. Look at that. That's so cool. This is much stronger than blue, and I'm just playing with it and bringing it around his elbow. And then around his side here. And then I'm going to light the bush. Mm -hmm. The bush is right there. Let's light that bush. Let's talk about the bush. That's right there. So now all of a sudden it feels like there's a guy and his dog just sitting out looking at the sky. Yeah. And then, right, you just make this decision when you're telling a story as an artist, and you're thinking, and you ask yourself, did this guy light a fire? That's really the only thing you're asking yourself right now. Mm -hmm. Did this guy light a fire? I'm leaving the deep dark right there. Just creating this little random bush shape. Random yeah. bush shape. And, and maybe I'm going to light, just come down here and just define the log a little bit. And you want to touch on the cloning thing there while you're doing your brushes? Yeah, so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to randomize. I like to go to the Jackie Chan place. I don't want to make the same repeat shape again and again, or it won't feel like anything is there. And, and what size brush are you using? I then? am using a number four bright. Really what I'm doing in the trees, I'm doing right here again. So, hey, right now... It looks like a guy under the stars at night with his dog. Pretty cool. 
But what else could we do? We can get our number four bright. And I'm going to think a number six bright. And we can start to light up the fire. Oh, you have to adjust your close-up camera for that. Yeah. Where are you going? Now, how we're going to light up the fire is the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to put out some cad orange. Okay. I like cad orange. I think it does things that other paints don't do. It's super bright. Okay. Like real cad red. I'm going to go But listen, check this is a hue. You can save money and do it in hue. All right. And I'm going to take a little of my... All right, I'm going to bring a little of my cad orange over to my brown. Cad orange over to my brown. And I'm going to light up just a little of this space. Come up your branches. Tap the underside of maybe some of your branches. Pull some of this light up into what's happening here. Just a little bit. It's it's. Less is more. All right. Light it up. Maybe a little bit here. Tap it out here. So you're bringing it out just a titch, just kiss there. You have to adjust your close up up here just a bit more. Okay. At the top so of it see how oh, that's yeah. just kissing a few of those trees. Yeah. Now, very lightly. All right. Very lightly, you're going to. Just create a little light inside. And I'm doing similar things that I was doing to the brush, but I'm doing it on the flat instead of on the dab, dab, dab. Doing it on the flat. Brush in a little curve here. Mm -hmm. Right? And back to just this little random just dusting this. You're letting the dark brown show through. Let the dark brown show through. When you get up near the trees, start flip over your brush over onto its edge and dab. When you get up to the trees, flip to the edge and dab. Now this orange is going to start to pull against this blue quite strongly. Bring it over a little bit this way. And here's another place you can put it. <coughs> if you're going to be lighting it up. Get that now, up. Not all over everything, but you can add this a little bit to here. And add a little to here. Just starting to. Yeah. Now I'm going to take this orange and I'm going to light up the edge of this bush over here. These two are going to light up with a very bright light. Yeah. But this back bush, this is going to actually be lit up with this. This is where having used the ultramarine is incredibly useful. Because it's going to really play against the orange and the burnt sienna. Yeah. See? Come over to this side. Light them up a little bit. Just a little bit. You do want this to be dry. They're not going to mix together and make a nice color. Right. So yep. believe it or not, this is going to feel like you're painting with a very bright orange, but you're not. You have knocked it way back with the burnt sienna, which is just sort of interesting. Maybe kiss a little bit right there, but not everywhere. And I might come and play there and... There's a little highlight there because I've got a little log we're sitting on. Yeah. So it is a good time. Now I'm going to use this small number two, but you could use the detail that we did with the stars. Right? I'm going to take this light color here and I'm going to come up alongside under, 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 under my branches. Under my branches. So, see, we're creating that highlight just a little bit, just a smidge of one. And we'll come back with a brighter, brighter, brighter one in a minute 
And maybe here I'm going to say, oh, I had a little branch there. So we're just saying, oh, there's just a little bit of something happening there. This helps us say that this is the woods. Now, in fire, yeah. the darker colors are going to be the outside. The lighter colors are going to be the inside. It's going to curve and move like waves. It's going to taper. Imagine that the fuel source is where it's the thickest. That's like the tree. Fire is like tree. <laughs> and as it goes up and up and away from it, it's going to lose its energy. So it's going to get thinner and more translucent. And then also in fire are embers, hot little bits of the energy that are floating up and getting caught in the wind and the air currents. Those are going to be flying up. So our first layer for fire mm -hmm. is going to be some cad red. First now, layer. Is, there, is, is hue okay here? Here, hue is just fine. Always, always just fine. Ca you can have real cadmium pigment or you can do hue. So this is a number two bright. You could do your number four bright. But just a small bright you have control of. You could do a detail brush if you can't get a bright. And I'm going to come here. Make sure I have my up close camera where I need it. All right. And <laughs> I'm going to tell a little story. A little flame is going to come up. Curve in. There's a little crazy shape. It's about curving up to a point and then being able to move away from it. All right. It's okay. I don't have a lot of water on my brush because it's okay if what's behind my fire shows through. So if I want a dry brush, that's perfectly good. All right. That's perfectly good to dry brush. Right? Because fire is see-through, isn't it? It is. So I'm going to get another little red. And I'm going to come and make a little flame here. See that little flame there? Little flame there. And then a small one right here. And then a small there. So see, I'm just tapering it up. A little fire. It's doing its little fire thing. I won't be reflecting this CAD on these guys, interestingly enough. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get some pure orange. Yeah, straight up orange. And I'm going to come in the middle and I'm going to dust inside. It's okay that it's partially wet. That gives me a nice blend. You see how it does? But I'm going to leave these yeah. outer edges dark. Because the heat is in the center. Right. Hotter it is, lighter it is. Right. If I wanted to say the fire was really, really hot, it would be white. I'm going to see what we can do here. So that's just the pure CAD. Now I'm going to take some just pure CAD. Where'd you go? There you go. Just straight up pure CAD. This pigment pops. Yeah. When you take it pure. Pure CAD. And I'm going to put a little bit here on the rock. And then I'm going to dance a little bit reflecting out. Oh, wow. Right? Yeah. Pure CAD is going to come a little along his body. Maybe I'll pull it back just a little bit. I don't make it a solid line, interestingly enough. Don't just outline. Yeah. Do a brush stroke. I'm going to come along his tail. But I'm not going to get every hair on the tail. It's just a couple there, see? Yeah. See how these guys are starting to glow in they the really fire? They are. All right. If you've got to switch to your detail, detail, micro detail, it's okay. All right. So I'm going to come along this hat. A little bit right there. And then under the brim, a touch. Right here. And then a little bit at the collar. Heavy on the shoulder. I'll narrow down. And then we're going to have this around the leg. A little 
little bit here is hitting him. See how he's starting to light now? Yeah. And take a little of this bright cad, just a small amount, and kiss a couple spaces on the trees and around the fire. Just real close to it, underneath the branches. When you're trying to think of where would it be the brightest, it would be under the branches. All right. So that's what you're lighting in, just a little bit. Keep those shapes un you know, unusual. And not a lot. Less is more. Let people finish the story for you. You can put a little of it, just a small amount, on this bush over here. And a little on the stick. Say, little. 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 Little maybe right here where the where it's sticking out a little bit where it might have caught some of the brighter warmth. So by focusing where I hit my high high highlights, I am greatly impacting right what feels like it is. Now I'm gonna take some just orange and I'm also gonna make sure so I've got these with the red outlines. I'm gonna make sure that I've got a couple flames coming up that are just orange and get some embers and how I get an ember and I really think it's important to have embers so I'm gonna just dab oh wow yeah that's cool some embers going up just a few just to say that's happening that's so cool now yellow straight cad yellow you can add a little white to it because what the issue is with cat is it's a great color, but its pigmentation can be weak. So if you add just a titch, a smidge, not enough to make it ducky yellow, you want it to still be cad of white to it, you can improve its coverage. Interesting. And I'm going to put a little bit right there on my fire. Down low. You're right. not on the close-up camera though. In that gorge, how much are we there, loving yeah. that we're lighting the world? And then I'm going to find little spots inside my fire that I light up. See? What's my fire? Is it hot now? Yeah. It feels hot. Maybe a little bit there. And maybe I add some to the flames going up. Places I might add some of this color are to... Right here. <laughs> and maybe a little bit around. The closest areas to the fire. The closest areas to the fire. Because of yours, right? Maybe like right here at his knee. Right there at that shoulder. Just the tip. Under the hat. Oh, yeah. So now we've said this, this is super hot and you can add this little bit of the ember coming up. Just a little bit, All right? Just, gonna, just make sure that there's hot in there. And the next one you can do Interestingly enough, is your white. So, uh, just a small amount in the highlight in the fire. There's an interesting question that came up here in chat. While you, uh, there's been a lot of people who've just been commenting on how great they think this is looking, and a, and a lot of talking about fires and and different paint colors that are going on. And I've just been quietly watching you paint this in because it's been so nice as I've been watching it. But there was actually a, a comment that came up here in chat hmm. um, that I wanted to 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 bring up. Uh, she said that she, I'm going to have to scroll back up to see who it was, but she said she bought a package of primary color paints and it came with red, green, blue, and white. Uh -huh. And was asking, very reasonably, is white a primary color? No. But it is a base palette okay. color. It is a base palette color. So black and white are not um, primaries. A red, blue, and yellow primaries and black and white are tints and shades. But that makes your base palette. 
That makes your base palette. Right. Because because you you either have to use the paper as white if you're doing watercolor, or you have to add white to get the tonalities that you need. So it's just a requirement to get to get shades, right? Because you've got what you're really painting is a grayscale of shades one to ten, one to thirty, whatever it is. Right? So you're painting that grayscale. We have a video um in if you go into the art quest, there's a video called Fifty Shades of Grey. Mm -hmm. Promise it's not about the movie at all. <laughs> and we talk a lot about what that's about and what those things are for. Yeah. Guess what? What's that? Look at it. Wow. It's finished. It's so good. Isn't that wonderful? I just love how that's come out. Isn't this just terrific? Wow. I I hope and and you guys understand that a little bit better. I just want to cover this. The light colors concentrate in the center of your fire and mostly where the fuel is. Right. Let me get close up on that. See? That's what you got to do. And then when you go back to the regular one, that's the effect you get. I full on shared this with you. That's so <laughs> awesome. And it's a birthday party. Happy birthday to everyone whose birthday is right now. And especially to Mona. Happy birthday, Mona. Thank you for being a light keeper, a light in the dark. We all appreciate you yeah. in the art community on YouTube. Your positivity, the way you comment when people share paintings, the way you support the content creators that teach the paintings or share the artwork. I don't know a person in art on YouTube that does not know and love you and appreciate you. Yeah, absolutely 1,000% agree with that. You have a wonderful birthday, and we'll see you at the easel really soon. Bye-bye, guys. Love you.